life, liberty and a free Switzerland. That was the dream every Swiss used to harbour in secret. They dared not voice it in public though. In the 15th century, Switzerland, a country in Central Europe, was governed by the Austrians. It was a tough and tyrannical regime. The Swiss had no choice but to pay heavy taxes, obey unfair laws and succumb to the whims and fancies of the Austrian overlords. Men like Baron Gessler delighted in inventing new humiliations to inflict on the Swiss. An edict forbade any farmer the use of a horse or an ox to pull his plough. After all, the Swiss farmer could haul his own plough and give his horse and ox to his Austrian counterpart. Baron Gessler used to stock the streets and lanes of Lucerne, surrounded by bodyguards just to revel in the discomfort and misery he caused the people. Power had gone to his head. It made him a little peculiar in his habits. He placed his hat on a pole and sent it to the market square with a diktat that whoever passed by must bow to the hat as though to its owner. A soldier was posted at the foot of the pole to ensure that everyone complied with the decree. The proud Swiss hated the very idea of bowing, of all the things, to a hat. They stopped going past the pole. At times, they had to take a long detour, but that was acceptable. One day, William Tell decided to come to the town to buy his weekly provisions. He lived high up on the steep Alps and had not heard about Gessler's strange hat laws. Making trouble was the last thing on his mind. He had brought his little son, Karl, with him that day. As he crossed the square, the soldier on duty barked like an angry dog. Bow to the hat! Why don't you? But why would I bow to a hat? inquired Tell in his low, shy voice. He was truly amazed. Because it's the hat of Baron Gessler and it represents him. Tell looked up at the hat and flatly refused to pay obeisance. Bow to it yourself, he said defiantly. The guard got very angry. So the great William Tell refuses to obey me. I know you. You are the famous archer, the best mountaineer, the best boatsman at Lake Lucerne, the most popular human being living this side of the Alps. You are now going to be imprisoned. William Tell tried to stay calm. All because I refused to bow to a hat? He was incredulous. By then, Baron Gessler had arrived at the trouble spot. He was munching an apple at the time. I'll forfeit your farm. I'll lock you up. I'll, I'll... He was trying very hard to come up with a more cruel punishment. Then he spotted Carl standing meekly in his father's shadow. Ah, I hear you've a fair art with a crossbow. What a waste it would be to bury such talent in a dungeon. If you can shoot this apple at a distance of 100 paces, you can go scot-free. The apple will be placed atop your son's Head. For the first time, Gessler saw fear on William's face. The kind of fear he so loved to inflict. Even Gessler's soldiers became quiet. There was pin drop silence. Everyone was shocked at the callousness. 
just then little carl spoke up do it father i am not scared i have full faith in you and i promise to stand absolutely still saying this he allowed a soldier to place the apple on his head then he was taken to an oak tree about 150 paces back and tied to it i am ready father called the brave lad i know my father will hit the apple with trembling hands william tell took aim and loosened the string carl held his breath a cloud covered the sun and then it was all over cheers went up from the swiss crowd from every window overlooking the square as carl rushed into his father's arms he's done it william tells hit the apple gesler was truly impressed but he could not resist asking him one last question why did you take out two arrows from your quiver when you were allowed only one shot had my son suffered even the slightest scratch my second arrow would have been used on you gesler replied tell calmly arrest him seize him traitor villain assassin gesler was livid lock him in my dungeon across the lake run carl run yelled tell as he was being dragged to a boat before the other guards could catch carl the crowds enveloped him in their midst it is said that fortune favors the brave as the boat reached the center of the lake a great storm developed and the boat got pushed in all directions gesler and his men lost all sense of direction a thick mist enveloped the lake and visibility became very poor the soldiers panicked and requested tell to help them tell agree but on the condition that they untie him and set him free on the boat the scared soldiers had no option as soon as tell was free he steered the boat towards a piece of land jutting out into the lake when the boat was a few meters away he took a giant leap onto the land and disappeared into the thick forest the mist and the storm came to his rescue shoot him kill him don't let him get away gesler screamed but the austrian guards were helpless a few years later switzerland finally became an independent country as they defeated the austrians and from that day onwards it has remained a free nation